how our gardening system works. Hi, I'm Leon and today I'm going to talk about the inspiration of Golem Bird's gardening system. One of the unique selling points of Golem Bird is its gardening system. It is based on permaculture and is more complex than gardening systems from other gardening or farming games while still being accessible as they are. But firstly, what is permaculture? In the words of Wikipedia, quote, Permaculture is an approach to land management and settlement design that adopts arrangements observed in flourishing natural ecosystems, end quote. This means that permaculture, one, sees everything in a state of flow and, two, tries to re-implement learnings from nature into modern gardening and society. Let's talk about point number one, seeing everything in a state of flow. This part represents the perma in permaculture. Seeing everything in a state of flow means that permaculture sees a system, for example a garden, as a whole. Resources and stakeholders of a permaculture garden should therefore be considered in every change one applies to the garden. Short example, removing weeds from the garden could affect the soil and the wildlife of the garden, which again could affect other parts of the garden over time. Let's talk about point number two trying to re-implement learnings from nature into modern gardening and society. This part represents the culture in permaculture. The important and recurring themes of permaculture's re-implementation of natural learnings are regenerative mechanics, natural resilience, sustainability and resource management. The idea of permaculture can thus be used in different use cases ranging from garden design to town planning because every use case is part of nature and can therefore be more or less natural. So how is permaculture implemented in our game Golem World? We try to implement the whole system thinking of permaculture in our game Golem World through multiple mechanics. These are 1. Progressive watering and fertilization 2. Neighborhood 3. Lifetime stats evaluation on crop yield and 4. Water resources and compost Point number 1. Progressive watering and fertilization Plants have three status values, watering, fertilization and neighborhood. The current watering and fertilization states of a plant are evaluated on a scale from 0 to 100 rather than in binary states, watered or unwatered. This allows plants to have different value ranges, for example for ideal, to less or too much watering. Plants consume watering and fertilization over time in exchange for growth. If a status reaches a too less or too much range, the plant stops growing and visually signals its displeasure with its current state. This progressive status system enables the player to learn about the needs, advantages and disadvantages of her different virtual plants and leads to a strategic view on garden planning. Plants with small ideal ranges need more attention than those with larger ideal ranges. Plants with the most water consumption should be placed near a source of water for shorter logistical distances and so on. Re-implementing those learnings is very permaculture-like. Point number two, neighborhood. Every plant feels differently about specific other plants in their proximity. For example, strawberries that need a lot of sun do not like big plants like pumpkins or watermelons as their neighbors because they block most of the sun's rays. They also do not like being next to cauliflower or potatoes because they all do need a lot of nutrients slash fertilization and compete for them when next to each other. On the other hand, good smelling herbs like thyme and mint attract a lot of pollinators and other insects that prey on parasites that could damage the strawberry and are therefore excellent neighbors for them. The idea of crop neighborhood itself is very permaculture-like. Having different zones or layering of crops based on their relationship to each other leads to a more efficient gardening layout and better yields. Which leads to point number three. Lifetime stats evaluation on crop yield. If a plant is fully grown, it considers its lifetime watering, fertilization and neighborhood states to evaluate its yield. A regular yield can be accomplished with any kind of lifetime stats. Bronze tier yields need at last a certain amount of their lifetime with ideal stats, while silver or gold tier yields even require the plant to have no too much or too less state in their lifetime and a positive lifetime neighborhood. Point number four, water resources and compost. Taking care of your plants in its essence is resource management. The main resources of our gardening system are water and soil slash fertilizer. To generate those resources, the player has to take care of securing their supply on a long-term basis. Currently, our water supplies are only limited by how much water one watering can can carry. Technically, the player can refill her watering can with no other limits. This is because the resupplying of a water source is really not in the hands of the player rather than the weather, so it didn't feel right to manage water resources. But the soil slash fertilizer supply is fully player managed by a compost. For everyone out there who doesn't know what a compost is, a compost is a pile of dead plants 
plants, organic materials and sometimes mania that slowly decompose into soil with the help of thousands of small animals living in it. That's exactly how the compost in Golemberg works. The player puts organic waste like leftover crop yields, roots or leaves in it and the compost turns it into soil slash fertilizer over time. The compost promotes the idea of a permaculture garden being a circular economy where nothing ever leaves the garden but always gets transformed into something useful. But how much does that affect the actual gameplay of Golden Bird? We really wanted to integrate permaculture as smooth as possible. Therefore the actual gameplay loop is not that much different from a gardening game you might like. But the game feel is very different. Having a more complex simulation of progressive plant states leads to a more dynamic gameplay. Plants can be watered two or more times a day if the player likes. Plants can finish growing at any time throughout the day too. The player-plant relationship is stronger than in other games by the active need for understanding and researching the needs of different plants in the in-game wikibook and through playing. Neighborhood and their involvement in gold tier crop yield production leads to a nice little gameplay learning curve after a few hours of gameplay that is still accessible for casual gamers but also satisfies the min-maxing player. Ultimately, using permaculture as a base for our gardening system felt really natural and like the next evolutionary stage of gardening games because of these points. Now after hearing all that noise about permaculture, one might finally ask, is permaculture really that important to make a whole game about it? First of all, Golembert is not only a game about permaculture. Shortly summarized, Golembert is one half gardening, one half story game. Permaculture plays a big part in our gardening system, but is more a subtle idea and an empowering feeling of having a self-sufficient circular garden than a big main focus of our game. But having permaculture in our game has one big benefit. It leads to a more humane view on plants. What are the needs my plants have? How could I improve the life of them and maximize the yields by doing this? Humanizing nature is one of the core messages of permaculture on our game Golemberg. So if you too like nature, and maybe even humans, consider following our development journey on YouTube and our other social media. Thank you very much for listening and have a nice day. Bye!